Hi there, Jake from Bush and Bush Coffee Systems with you and today we're looking at our project roaster Little Red. We've got a couple of questions that we need to answer here today. We've done a little bit of homework but we thought we'd share it with you. The two questions that we had, first one is the simple one. What is the absolutely ideal location for the all important Boone Temperature Probe? Bean Temperature Probe is the most significant recorded temperature during a, during a roast and it's very important that he's in the right location. If it's in the wrong location you'll get spurious readings, they won't be accurate for the bean and you'll just struggle all the time to have a successful roast. So what we're going to do is mark the location that we think is ideal and we'll see if that probe location needs to change during our theoretical roast. The second question that we had was a more baffling one. Little Red has been fitted with a variable speed drive and a new motor gearbox combination. That allows him to be a, to change the drum rotation speed to whatever we, we want. He used to rotate far too slow for his operation but there was a number of factors involved in that too. Initially Little Red used to be a um, indirect heated roaster so he had these IR panels down here and that go underneath the drum around to the side here and they radiate heat onto the drum and the temperature of the drum goes into the beans. A lot of roasters operate like that but they have a very slow characteristic of transferring heat into the beans they're not very dynamic and when you want to roast very high quality beans you need to be very dynamic in the way that you transfer heat and be able to control it more precisely. So that method is great for a more docile response. We want a very sharp response. So we're not getting rid of the IR temperature elements underneath here. We're going to control those using a variable speed controller as well. But most of our temperature is going to come through air that will be inducted and into the roaster. Now that air we'll be able to control the airflow precisely and the temperature of that air independent of each other. So theoretically what we will do is we will use the IR panels to control a base load temperature which controls the skin and therefore the air temperature that we induct into it is all about roasting the beans. In order to do this though we need to make sure that the beans move properly in the drum. To help us work that out, we've taken the metal face off and we've replaced it with a face made out of a polycarbonate product so that we can see what's going on inside. Obviously we can't put any heat on this, but what we can do is we can put in the correct amount of beans and simulate a roast. We thought you might be interested to see what happens. So let's start him up. We've done a couple of trials and we've worked out an ideal starting speed for the roaster. And here we go, 250 grams of green beans in here and we're running at 65 hertz frequency on our inverter drive. We can see that the beans are travelling right up the wall up to around about this point here. Now what we have observed is that as beans roast they get bigger in size as they swell and they also get lighter. The combination of these two factors change the way that they move up the sidewall of the drum. And what we think is that while we can start off faster with the drum, as the beans reduce in weight and grow in size, we will need to slow the speed of the drum down during the roast. Let's get back to our bean probe for a moment. We can see here the path of the beans on the outside of the drum is moving up the drum and we can see beans moving back down as they, as they fall back down. Our absolute ideal bean temperature position is going to be right there, I suspect. So let's mark that and let's watch what happens as we progress through our roast. And here we are. Back again, through the magic of film, we've transferred straight into the first crack phase of the roast. 
We've gone from 250 grams of green beans, we're now back to 235 grams of beans, and we're in first crack. We've changed our speed from 65 hertz frequency on the green, and now we're back to 58 hertz on our first crack coffee. Let's check our bean temperature probe first. We can see it's still in the ideal location where beans are moving past on one side, returning on the other. So we, we still know that this is a correct position. Happy with that. Let's look at how far up the beans are traveling. They've come down a fraction. Let's mark that. But we can also see that the flow of the beans is quite smooth. We don't have a lot of beans jumping over the top of the shaft and impacting into the back of the drum. So I'm very happy with that. That's 58 hertz down from 65 hertz. And we're at first crack. And here we are. Very late first crack, approaching very close to second crack. Our speed has decreased from 58 hertz in the previous to 52 hertz now, so we are slowing down. Let's check our bean temperature probe. Still in a nice location. Beans are travelling around him, so less likely for him to get damaged because he's only going to be a 1.5 millimetre probe. Great temperature response, but he's also still in a great location, so I'm still happy with that. Let's have a look at where the beans are travelling up to. Just about there. Now the beans are still tumbling nicely. Still just jumping just over the centre of the rotational shaft. The beans are being pulled all the way back to the back of the drum. I'm still quite happy with that. Beans are flowing nicely. Let's see what happens as we approach the very end of the roast. And here we are again, rapidly approaching the very end of the roast. We're well, well into second crack here, right at the very end of second crack. In fact, these beans we know are a roast density of 0.5, pretty much as low as you can go. Let's have a look at our bean probe again, still in a great location, so again, still very happy with that. Now normally, we wouldn't roast to this point, because theoretically it is the very end of the chain that you can, can go to. However, we want our little roaster to be capable of doing anything, and so he needs to be able to cope with all scenarios. So here we have it. Now our speed is down to 45 hertz. We can see that the beans are rolling and turning over at that point there. We can see that they're still flowing nicely. There's not a lot of beans impacting across the top of the shaft. Of course they've swollen as far as they can in size. We're down to 200 grams in beans. So from the very beginning, we started off with 250 grams with our green beans. And of course they lose weight and increase in size as they progress through the roast. Now that we're at the end, we're down to 200 grams here with these totally over roasted beans. We've marked our location. I'm very happy with the speed there. For all of those of you that know that, well, frequency is not very relevant, I'll give you the figures correctly so that you can ratify what you've observed for those that are keen to work it out. So at the very front end, we had our green beans and they had a drum rotational skin speed, which is more important than rotation, unless you know the circumference. So the actual skin speed for our green beans was 428 millimetres per second. Then we went to our filter roast and we had 382 millimetres per second of drum speed travel. Then we went to our beginning of second crack, late first, beginning of second, down to 220 grams and we had a drum speed of 343 millimetres per second. Now we're at the end of the chain we've got a drum rotation speed of 296 millimetres per second. So we've come quite a, a fair way from 428 to down to 296 at the end of the roast. 
I hope this has been informative. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's time to get these out before they get overcooked. Again, roasting without heat has been great fun. I look forward to being able to show you this little guy in action when he's fully dialed in. Next time you see him though, he'll have his old face back on. Thanks for watching. By all means, send in any questions. We'd be interested in your view on this because at the moment, this is all theory. Cheers from Bush and Bush Coffee Systems.